Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, John, the house guy, here with my lovely co-host. Kim, the home girl. And this is the House Guy and Home Girl podcast, where we try each week to bring you some relevant information about home building and real estate. And this week, we're going to talk about real estate as a side hustle and things that you can do, even with a full-time job, to make some money using real estate as a tool. You're listening to the House Guy and Home Girl podcast, a podcast about real estate and real life. As realtors, home builders, and real estate investors, John and Kim keep it real. Former teachers turned real estate professionals, they have a heart for helping others. Join them each week as they discuss all things home. And now, here's your hosts, John and Kim. So, welcome to this week's show. Kim, what's been going on with you here lately? We had a solo show last week. I don't know. Week. What day is it? Like, is it Friday? Friday again. Yep. Um, well, I was Same just telling um, our producer, I said, you know, it feels like yesterday was Halloween. Literally, like, yesterday, it feels like we went trick-or-treating, and, like, now it's it's Friday, November 17th. Thanksgiving is next week. Thanksgiving is next week. That's right. And I don't know when the show's going to air, but um, I may even be behind on that. But Oh, it should air maybe on Black Friday, I think. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Alabama, Auburn, Roll Tide. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so this week has been just crazy in the week before and the week before. And then October was just crazy as well and um, all the things. Yep. It's been very busy. We got the house in the back finished, listed on the market. 100% moving forward on that. Uh, probably the absolute worst time of year to put that thing on the yeah, market. Yeah, the holidays. It's just that's, slow. That's a rough time, but people still move and shake during you yeah, know, the holidays. Yeah, we showings on it, but still, it's like, ugh, it's right. just a slow time, right? With the real estate market being slow because of the holidays, interest rates being high, it's been uh, it's been tough. So, what what else has been going on? <clears throat> lots, lots. Yeah, a whole lot. We had a we we are drama people, and um, Nora tried out for Matilda Junior this week, and so today is the day she's going to find out. So here's hoping. Ah, um, that's going to be super cool. And then last night was the opening night for Mean Girls, which was absolutely amazing. Those kids, they have so much talent, and I hope you follow me on Facebook too because. Um, and, and you, you know, catch a show because I've got alerts out there, like buy your tickets and all that. Like it, it was it not just yeah, so Muscle amazing. Yeah, Performing Arts does a great, great I job. I mean, mind blowing. Like yeah. those kids could like, like take this show, like a traveling cast of it. Like it was that good. And of course, Emmett's in it too, yep. our son. Um, but it was so good. Like, like those kids just went out there and like just dove in like feet first and nailed it it was so fun. good like yeah. they were created for those parts some of them but um that was good and then we watched the last una band rehearsal at oh, on pride field yeah pride field yeah that was that was tough well and here's what i thought about though you know like just be doing what we do now in mm -hmm. construction right i thought it may not be the last one because if you know anything about construction you know there are delays <laughs> Right. That is true. So they may not even, it may or may not have been the last one. They may be on that field next year because construction is notorious, especially big time projects like that. Right. They Still may. though, it was really cool to be there at two o'clock, at band o'clock. Um, and we got to see some of our old band members from 20 years ago and um, just super cool. So yeah, a lot of support there for the band. Of course, we, you know, it's a big part of our lives and yeah, uh, good to see a lot of the old how we met. The old folks, although the old folks, which were there with us, right? That's how we met. Yep, 100%. So in the band there. Yeah, if you, you were, um, and if you're not familiar where, where Pride Field is, it's um, across from Rice Hall on Pine Street. Mm -hmm. So um, as you're coming, as you, you're on Pine Street and, um, you know, your KFC is way back here and you start going down the hill towards the university, um, like the first building you see is the, like it's a, um, um, a dorm for, I, I don't even know what it is now. It's adjacent to the baseball field. Though, yeah. I the mean. baseball fields and all that. But pride field is the first field on the right. If you're going towards Norton auditorium. So, um, just really cool to be there at two o'clock and to see all that. And like, I have to say though, I was walking down that, that little hill and I started getting anxious. Like, I don't know. You just, it's, it's something about the, the time and like that solidified in my mind. Like, 
do I have everything I need? Because sometimes I don't, I didn't have everything I mm-hmm. needed. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, the right clothes or whatever, because we all had to It match. was funny, though, because we got there, like, after two. We got there at 204, 205, something like that. We're getting out of the car, and there's, I don't want to tell on anybody, but there's two band kids getting out of their tick cars. and ticks. And getting ticks, man, running down the <laughs> running down the hill in the back. But they were able to sneak in because... Dr. Jones is up there talking to all the alumni people, and right. they just slipped in. So, Yep, great times, great times. I spent four years of my life on that field. You were there for five. I was, yeah. So, anyways, but made us who we are today, I guess. So, um, just <clears throat> good times all the way around. But let's go ahead and dive in the show today. We went back and forth about the title, um, but I think we have decided on real estate as a side hustle. And yes, you can make some extra money um, by having real estate as a side hustle. The biggest thing is make sure you're an organized person. This, If you are disorganized and um, you don't have a good handle on your finances, you're not good with money, then I would say maybe knit a blanket, but not real estate because you have to know... Like, you have to keep up with everything you spend because, um, and that's what we tell people, even when, you know, they move in a house and they say, well, I want to fix it up and sell it down the road. Make sure you know how much you have in it because that's important. We started out with real estate as a side hustle. You know, we were both teaching and working. And um, at that time, the first thing we did was flip a house, right? right? And that's the first thing on my list, flip a house. That's something that you can do while still working a full time job. You know, you just basically what we would do is we found uh, contractors and handymen. We made a list of the things that we wanted to do. So let's go ahead and talk about what that looked like for us. So we were both teaching. So we're, you know, clocking in and clocking out every day, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 per se. Um, We've got a little bit of savings saved up. I mean, you know, not an incredible amount, you know. So you've got to have a little bit of money that, is saved up for unexpected things. Um, well, and, and if you're going to borrow the money, you're going to need some kind of down payment or whatever right. to do the project. And I'm not, I'm not real sure on all the ins and outs of how we dove in, but I think we were able, like as far as closing costs and all that. So what you need to remember is when you're flipping a house, the bank is not going to give you more money than the house is worth. They're not going to give you more money to do repairs with. They're only going to look at... Wait, say that again. They're the not going to give you the money to do the repairs. That's right. That's right. So you p- people think that all the time. Well, I'll just go borrow all the money. That is and do huge. It. After repaired value is not what the bank is looking at. They're looking at, okay, what are we buying with our money right here as it sits? And not only that, the house, what it's worth, it's usually um, 75% of that. Uh, the value. value. Oh, I got you. Yeah. So yeah, you're responsible for a down payment or whatever that is. Yeah. Like you're going to have to. But you're only going to be able to. Yeah. Say the house is right now. What's in, the number? In, in is trashy it 75 shape, percent? Right? It's bad shape. And they're going to say, okay, we'll give you 80 percent of that. 80 yeah. percent. 80 percent. So I mean, it's all different you get, depending on yeah, what bank you Yeah. It, it does vary. But uh, generally 75 to 80 percent is all you can even loan out on the house. So you need some cash of your own or you need to get it so good at a price that's so good that that's still going to cover you, right? And so what happened with us on our first flip, just raw numbers, <clears throat> we bought that house for $37,000. And because we had been diligent in paying off a lot of student loan debt, we had good credit score, and we were good credit-worthy people. Our debt-to-income ratio looked very good. Yeah, it was basically zero. Um, we didn't have any Minus car our house. Yeah, we did. All we had was a house. That's right. So we went to the bank and basically uh, took out an almost an unsecured line of credit for the 37000 to buy the house. Interest only. Interest only. And then plus, I told the bank, and I didn't really know for sure, but I told them it needed about $10,000 worth of work. And so we were able to borrow $47,000, buy the $37,000 house, and then spend that money to do the repairs, right? And then... Because the bank valued the house more than that. Right, and they looked at our credit worthiness and all that kind of stuff. Right. And what we were saying is, hey, here's what we think. This is what we've been told. And um, we got some estimates together and some stuff like that, and we got that money. And regardless, it was interest only. So as we drew out money, we had to pay interest on the money that we drew out. And then after one full year, all the money, all the money, all the interest, everything would be due. I remember that too because 
it was very, um, like all the credit that I had ever dealt with was like for a house, 30 years, mm-hmm. a car, five years. Right. And then you go in there, you sign a note and it says in 12 months, you're going to pay all well, this money back. Right. Every bit of it. Plus the interest. So that means you've got to fix it and manage the money, get, you know, and pay your interest, your monthly interest on time and sell the house and close on the house because you got to get your money out within a year. Within a year. Yeah. And that was daunting, seemed daunting at the time. Like, oh man, that's like, and really and truly we did it in about six months. We had it done from close to close, finished up. We made good money on it. And that was one of the first things we saw. Like we, we made almost. We looked at this house. Um, It's so funny because when this show airs, it's going to be on the Friday after Thanksgiving. We looked at that house on the Friday after Thanksgiving in 2013 is when we started. And then we closed the 1st of June on that house. Um, The reason I remember I was pregnant with Nora at the time. Gotcha. Um, But yeah, so roughly like right at. You know, I mean, we six months to get our money and all that because, you know, we looked at it and then I don't know, I guess we didn't close until December ish or somewhere in there. So I don't remember all those details. What I remember is we closed and we got our check and it was like half of what we made in a year as a teacher. Right. And it was kind of like. Oh, well, we should do this. Like we and should, we, were, we, we were, should pursue this right, more. We should, right? Yeah, yeah. We were not a big company then. We didn't have an LLC and bought the house, made the repairs. It was literally um, a side hustle for us. Now we we did um, call contractors and things like that, and um, you know, kept up with them, check their work check their work before we paid them, that kind of thing. And, you know, there's a a few things that we did on our own. I remember um, the house was actually ready during spring break, the end of March. So that's how long it took us to, to, you know, do the, all the repairs because you got sick pressure washing outside. Yep. Um, So just, you know, get ready. If you do buy a flip, you probably will wind up rolling your sleeves up and getting dirty. Be some stuff that Um, you have to do. And then again, sweat equity there. You know, you're working your full-time job. You still can go by there in the afternoons or whatever. Check on what's going on and and move. Right. It wasn't. Move the project forward. The most stressful thing is like just being, you know, like this is a new thing for us. And like really the most stressful thing was, um, the fact that like all that money was involved in the beginning, like as far as the work, it didn't need a whole lot of work. Um, but yeah, the money and we were, you know, we had everything written down and we were very organized with it. And so, um, at the end of it, you know, we were able to make a profit. Praise the Lord. So a, a flip is a side hustle. You got to manage your budget and manage your time. Mm-hmm. And keep up with everything that's going on over there. And then if you do that, you can make some decent money flipping a house. Yeah. The next one I have on my list is rentals. Let me go back to that first flip. So we, I think, turned about our salary. Like we, It, it was about $40,000. Yeah. So it's about what, what we, we made would, on that like, first flip. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of those things where it was like. I think it was like 46, actually. In our, anyways, in our pocket, out the door. So we pretty much doubled what our take home would yeah, be. Yeah, and it was one of those things where you go, okay, well, if you did that twice a year, you don't have to do all this seven thirty to four thirty and ball game. Right. Yeah. But it still wasn't. It still wasn't one of those um, where we're ready to quit our job yet. Right? Yeah. No. So the next step we took is we we got into the rental game, mm-hmm. owning rentals. That's the next thing we have as a side hustle. So a lot here. of people do. Uh, are uh, rental owners, landlords, and things like that. And um, I don't know, and I may be wrong, but I don't know of very many people that have got into the rental game and got out. Like most people are long-term, going that long road, you know, just that passive income. Like rental, the rental game is a good game. It is a long game. Um, you got to kind of stay with it. Um, but it's predictable. You know what I mean? Like, um, and so the money... rental, the rental thing, the beauty of the rental thing as a side hustle is you're not going to get completely rich owning one rental property, Correct. you know, but what you are going to do is build some long-term wealth, right? right? You're going to have what you're shooting for is to have some cash flow on the property. You want to have the money coming in, be a little bit more or a lot more than what's going out. So you got to factor in your payment, your taxes, your insurance, your repairs, your maintenance, your vacancy rate, all of those things into the house and then go, okay, if I do all that and property I put, tax insurance, put money aside for all of that mm-hmm. 
am I still making money each month? And if you're still putting a hundred dollars a month in your pocket, then you're doing good. And then over the course of time, that balance on that loan is going down. Another person is paying it, not you. They're paying it. You're putting a hundred dollars of their money in your pocket. And then the house value is going up. So that's where you're making long-term money, right? So where eventually when you sell that property, you make that difference and the person that's paid all the payments is somebody else. Yeah. And you just keep like, you get that house paid off and then you buy another one, you know, um, talk about maybe a little bit of the burr method. So yeah, the burr method is where you buy a house and then you do the rehab on the house. So the B stands for buy and then rehab. So you will take the property that's in bad shape and you'll do some of the work or, or take a contractor and have the work done or whatever, but you're basically adding value to increase the rent. Buy it, rehab it, rent it out. So then you rent it out to somebody and they're going to make the payment on it or whatever. Which it looks like a flip up until that. Yeah, I call it flipping it to yourself, right? Like right. You flip it to yourself. So buy, but you rehab, keep it. rent And then you refinance it. You take it to the bank after you've got it stabilized. You've got a renter in there. The house is in good shape. Then the appraiser comes in and sees lots of value and goes, okay, well, this house is worth this much money, which will be more than you have in it if you did everything right. And then you pull your money back out. The tenant pays the bill. You take that money. And buy another house. The last R, repeat. Right. You repeat that process. Burr. And that will get you... Uh, that's a way to build wealth very quickly with, with rental property. And you have to be, um, and you don't have to do that full time. It's not a full time gig there either. You, right. know, you can do that and still work your full time job. Right. Yep. Uh, another rental. Now this is still a rental property, but commercial real estate mm-hmm. is a, um, is another avenue that people can do as a side hustle. It's really works the same way as, as a rental, a residential rental, but the difference is there's pros and cons to that. So, if you look at a commercial rental, right, one thing that is going to be is more than likely a longer term tenant in there, right? Somebody's going to come in there and put some money into fixing the place up, painting it their brand colors, uh, you know, adding their fixtures or whatever they want. What are those called? Trade, trade fixtures. Trade fixtures. <clears throat> they're going to add that stuff in there and, and really rehab the building for you. And most of the time they're going to be on a longer term lease, right? Mm-hmm. A con. Yeah, if you want to see an example of commercial leases, um, just travel down the end of Second Street, going towards the airport. Um, a lot of those buildings, um, the the names and companies on the outside are generally the, not the ones who own the building. So the owners of the building and the property um, generally they're having they're they're they've got a commercial lease in place. Yeah, and those people that are having that business are going to be there. You know. A person that's living in a residential house, you know, something may happen in their life and they move, you know, like, oh, I'm going to move to another rental house or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. A business owner, generally, you know, they don't want a lot of turnover, a lot of moving and all that kind of stuff. So they're going to stay there for a longer term. The One of the cons, I think, for or a couple cons for commercial real estate is cost of entry is a little higher. Mm-hmm. Right? It's going to cost you a little more. Yeah, I think that I think the um, the pool of people that that are into commercial real estate or commercial real estate, commercial rentals and all that, I think it's like probably 10% of well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 10, there's less I mean definitely less, less businesses yeah, than there because are I people think it, living in houses. It takes more pocket money on the front end than you know, just the rental game as a whole. Yeah, and and another con is this, you'll see rental commercial rentals stay vacant for longer, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of times you'll see something stay vacant for, you know, I know that where Planet Fitness is in Florence, mm-hmm. like that was vacant for years, mm-hmm. years. You know, it was used to be Kmart or Walmart or what was that back there? Oh, Planet behind, Fitness in Florence. Behind the bowling alley. It was Kmart because I was a Girl Scout and I sold Girl Scout cookies there. And then after Girl Scout cookies, we bought a black and white TV <laughs> on sale. I'm really not that old. I was born in the 80s, but I do remember that Kmart. And then maybe it was a furniture place. I don't know. But, but yeah, it was empty for probably five Yeah, and that's prime real years. estate on, on Florence Boulevard. Yeah, and those people had, you know, they had the long game on it. Yeah, but I mean, still, it's still a great investment. But I'm just saying you may have to wait a little longer to get a tenant in place. Yeah. And that's another thing like, you know, with commercial real estate, um, we have clients that are commercial real estate clients and, you know, um, we just cross all our T's and dot all our I's when we're looking for property for them, because you have like location, location, location is super important 
with commercial real estate. You yep. know, you don't want to be buying a big, you know, even though they've got a, this, you know, this building may be just grand and, you know, it's outfitted with HVAC and insulation and all this and it's plumbed appropriately and it's got enough office space. But if it's out, you know, wherever, like your, your pool of people are not going to be as much as you know a prime real estate person and who are you what like you know all the places at the end of um avalon there you know an industrial park in muscle shoals a lot of those are like well i won't say a lot of them but i mean they're people go in that those stores and so they they need convenience the area like the inline place i'm so Mm -hmm. thankful that they put an inline um place there because it's just so convenient but i'm not going to go all the way out to leeton for inline so i love how your idea of grand is something with hvac and plumbing a grand, you know what i a mean grand building with hvac and plumbing. but sometimes people just have a building and then they stick a mini split there and like you're like mm, no i'm you know for a fact you're gonna have to spend fifty thousand dollars I mean, that's, that's pretty important. Like if it's not, but if I'm, you know what I'm talking about? If you've got this great metal building and it's already like got two units and it's got a couple bathrooms and some office space, you're like, man, this is great. Great. It's not only great, it's grand. (laughs) Shut up. Like let's go to the next topic. All right. The final one I have is a real estate side hustle is wholesaling. All right. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really familiar about wholesaling and I'll just say that I don't know much about it. Yeah. Go for it, John. Wholesaling is when you go out and you spend money marketing and trying to find off market, dilapidated, abandoned, out of state owner. Now I do know houses. a little bit. Maybe a courthouse step steps property. You can get them there, sure you can, yeah, buy them at auction on a courthouse steps. But wholesaling is the whole idea is this. I'm going to buy this house. I'm not going to flip it. I'm not going to make it a rental. All I'm going to do is buy this house and sell it to somebody else that wants to flip it or have it as a rental. And in the middle, in the, in the meanwhile, middle ground there, I'm just going to add my money to it. So I'm going to buy this house on the courthouse steps for $40,000. And I'm going to call up Kim who wants to flip houses and say, Hey, I got this great deal on a house, $55,000. Are you interested? Are you interested? Are you interested? And call a bunch of people until I find somebody that wants to buy it. And then really and truly never touch the house. Sometimes not even go inside it. Sell it to you for 55. I bought it for 40. I make the difference. And I have wholesaled that property. Mm-hmm. I know. I know people that do that. Yeah, here it's, locally. It's, yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a. It's a lucrative it's a thing. business. And I think too, like those people are the hustlers, you know, because they get out there and they know that this property is coming for sale, or they have contacted the owner and asked them to sell the property. Um, and and some of those, you know, we buy houses fast, or we buy houses with cash. Um, some sometimes they are some of those people, you know. So there's two ways to do that too, and and. It, it's a great strategy for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money up front to invest, right? Because you can go out and find an out-of-state owner or an abandoned property owner or somebody that's got a property that's maybe they inherited, they don't want to deal with it, and say that say that you go and meet with them as a wholesaler and you say, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a contract with you for 30 days for X number of dollars. Let's just call it $50,000. i am going to give you $50,000 for this house. Here's what I need. Here's what I want. 30 days. And in 30 days, if I can't find an end buyer for the house to sell it, then we don't have a contract anymore. It just goes away, right? So that way, if if, if I can't find a buyer for 60 or 75 or whatever I want to mark it up to, then I haven't lost any money. I have zero money in it, zero money out. didn't cost me anything. I just have a contract with them. If I find an end, an end buyer that will buy the property and pay me my fee or my markup, then what we do is we schedule a closing. And at that closing, I attend and I have my fee added to the closing disclosure and it comes straight out and the buyer, on my end buyer buys the property from the seller. Or we double close it, I get the money, I close, and then I turn around immediately and sell it right back. But any, either way, it's the, it's the end buyer's money that comes through the, the process, and that's how I get 
to take my money out and it didn't cost me any money. So wholesaling is a, it's a little confusing, but it does. It, it is complicated are... to, to a certain degree, but it's also, uh, you have to work. It's, it's probably one of the more difficult ones as a side hustle, mm-hmm. right? Because you got to, but I put do know seriously, y'all, there properties. are people out there in Florence and the Shoals area that that's what they do, you know? And some people, um, will buy up just little tracts of land, you know, because they know and they keep them because they know that eventually that house that's beside that track of land um, will come up for sale and they can, since that person owns that land or is buying the other part attached to it, they can charge whatever they want to. Like, okay, well, if you want this and you want to put a fence up, you know, you, you need my little bit of land that I bought five years ago for two grand, but I'm charging you 25 for it. Yeah, wholesaling is, like I said, a quick and easy way to make money without any money up front. But it also is, well, I said quick and easy. It's not quick because there's a lot of time spent. It's quicker in the grand scheme of all the other things that you've listed. Well, it doesn't cost you anything. But as far as chasing dead-end leads and talking to a bunch of people that are not going to ever materialize, you're going to spend a lot of time. But if you don't have any money saved up you don't have any money to invest in real estate you don't have any money to get started the only asset you have is your time the Mm -hmm. only way you're going to be able to make a side hustle out of this is putting your time in you know so put your time in as a wholesaler if you want to get into that that's a that's an easy start because it doesn't cost you a whole lot of money yeah so flipping houses rental property commercial wholesale that's four ways that you can use real estate as a side hustle. Yeah, you can create what's out there already and turn it and make a pretty good dollar on it, you know, but you've got to be you got to be organized, you got to have a uh, a budget in place and you got to have an end goal goal and you've got to have a timeline. You know, you can't And you just- got to have the attitude that I'm not going to make any excuses. Like I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to make yeah. it work, you know, cuz you're going to run into roadblocks in every one of them. You're going to come up to it and be like Oh man, what? Oh, I did not expect that to happen. Figure it out, move forward, right? So, rich dad, poor dad. You know, there's so many books out there on some of these things, though. Start small, profit big is a better one for this topic, though. Start small, profit big. I haven't read that, um, but anyways. So. Which of these have you read? Um, none of them, John. That's right. <laughs> Should, I haven't read that one. I'm like that one, you haven't read. Mm-mm. What about all these other ones? No, John is the real estate investor guru. So, you know, like you don't need two gurus just, in a house no. because those brains will not work together. <laughs> I just read more than you do. That's all. Yeah, I don't read. And I had a lot more time when I was babysitting all those computer lab kids to read all those books. Yep. So God allowed you. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you. all that to say. Hope that some of the information that we took out of these books and out of our experience has helped you some and that you will. Yeah, just uh, reach out to us as well. You know, we can, if there's, um, if you guys have any questions, just drop us a question or reach out and we'll be glad to talk about it. This one right here loves investing and real estate investing. So as I you know, said, he's been doing his research and homework for years. So yeah, he probably knows a little more than I do about it. But if we can help you in any way, just let us know. And it was a side hustle for us and became our full-time gig. Yeah. So if we can help you, let us know. Thanks so much for watching the show. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the House Guy and Home Girl podcast, your number one source for all things home. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out our YouTube page for video content from the show.